Okay, now I want to talk about how to build a star rating system using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So I have here a series of stars. I've got a div containing these elements. And as I click on the different stars, I'm changing what the rating is. Value of 1 to 5. I've got 5 stars. 1 to 5 makes sense. All right, now, how to achieve this with the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? So I have... Um, web page here. I'll, I'll leave the code gist to this and inside of here I've also got a link to a code pen that has a slightly different way of coding it. So I will have the link to this. It does the same thing. It's got a hover effect uh, for mousing over the stars and the code is slightly different but it's achieving the same result. Just two different approaches. So with this one what I'm doing is I have a div this div I gave the class stars. It could be anything at all, but that's just the name that I'm giving it to, giving to it. And I have a data property called data rating. This is the number that I'm going to use. So every time the person clicks on a different star, I take the number of that star and that becomes the value for the new rating. These stars, if I was to re retrieve them with a document query selector all, I would get a list of these things, uh, an array-like collection of these spans. And because it's an it's like an array, it's a collection, because of that, they would be numbered 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I want to use the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as the value. So I have to remember, whenever I'm dealing with them, I'm either going to have to be adding or subtracting 1, subtracting if I want to deal with the index number, adding if I want to deal with the value of the one that's been clicked on. When I click on one, I'll update this. So back in the browser, as I click on one of these, I'm selecting this. So this is position one, index number one, but the rating is two. This value right here, this is actually just being generated with CSS counters. So I'll show you how that's done at the very end after we've got the JavaScript working. Okay, so my basic div class stars five spans each with the class star. When I highlight them, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to be adding the class rating to make this star up here filled in as opposed to the outline. You'll notice these are outline stars, these are filled in stars, and I'm doing this in the CSS. By default, each of the spans uses goldenrod as the color, so that's being applied to the character, and I'm using the Unicode characters for 2606 is an outline of a star. 2605 is a filled in star. I'm just changing this. So a star, I'm using the before pseudo element to inject this content. I've got a NBSP here. It's a space just so that the star is recognized as something and there'll be a little bit of space in between each one of them. With the star, I'm injecting before this space this character. So the star outline. And I'm giving them all the cursor pointer. So you get the little hand so you know it's something that you can click on. When I add the class rated, so here it's just star and then star plus rated inside the same before content, I'm changing it to the filled star. So all I have to do is add or remove the class rated on any one of these to change it from the outline to the filled star. Okay, there's the basic CSS. Now let's look at the JavaScript. Our initial setup, when the page loads, I want to take the value right here, this data rating. I want to take that number and then say, okay, I need to fill in this one and this one and this one because three is the number that I've got. So everything that's less than three, basically, for the index numbers, those are the ones that I want to fill in. So those are the ones I have to add the class rated, rated, rated. DOM content loaded. Find all of the stars, everything with the class star. Loop through each of them, add a click listener to call my other function here, my second function, set rating. So anytime you click on a star, it's going to call this function down here. So we'll get into that in just a moment. In addition to adding the click listeners when we first set this up, I want to take the initial value and set that rating. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to figure out, okay, number three, that's this one. I want to pretend like the user just clicked on this. Use this function that I've already built 
and just say, okay, let's pretend the user just clicked on this. That's what's going to trigger adding the rated class to the first three things. So we find stars, that's our div, get the attribute data rating, that's this number. Now, whenever you pull a value out of an attribute in HTML, it is going to be a string. So we have to convert it into a number to make sure that we're working with a number and not a string. And that's what the purpose of this parseInt is. I'm getting the value of data rating, turning it into an integer. Then number three, you'll remember these index numbers are zero, one, and two. So it's the index number two is the one that I want to get. I take my rating and subtract one. Stars up here, that was all the spans, so it's an array. Index number two is what we're doing. We're saying the target is stars sub two. That would be this span right here. Now let's pretend it was clicked. So we're going to dispatch an event. It's going to be a click event. A new mouse event of the type click is going to be dispatched on this span. That will trigger, because I'm dispatching this click event, that's going to trigger this function to be called. And inside this function, the target of the event is going to be this one that we just pretended to click. So we'll take a look down here. If you've got any question about that, I have another video about dispatch event. I'll put a link to that down in the comments as well so you can learn a little bit more about that. Now inside this second function, set rating, current target, that is the span that was just clicked. I'm going to get, again, all of the spans because I'm going to loop through all the spans. And thankfully, we can rely on the fact that the browser, when you say query selector all, it always reads from top to bottom in the file. So I know that the order it is going to be reading through these is in the order that I have them written. That's the only way this script is going to work without any other changes. I could add other data properties inside of each one of these to say what the values are and then reference those values. But I'm just going to rely on the fact that query selector all gives them back to me in the order that I have them written. I have this Boolean flag that I'm setting to say I haven't found a match yet. As I loop through, I'm looking for the one that was clicked. So stars is all of the spans. I'm going to loop through each of them using a for each loop. Inside of here, the variable star represents each one of the spans in turn. If match. So it starts off as false. So we haven't found the match yet. Remove the class rated. If we have if we have not found the match, we're going to add the class rated. So looking at these in order, on the first one, we have not found the match, so we're adding the class rated. On the second one, we have not found the match, so we're adding the class rated. The third one, we haven't found the match, we're adding the class rated. And we haven't found it because we haven't changed the value. It was false up here. Now. After we run this little bit of code, we're going to check to see, okay, star, is star, that's this one right here, the one that we're looking at, the same as span, right here. Are they the same object? We can actually use the three equal sign in here. That's probably much better to use. Star and span, if they are the same object, so am I looking at the span that was clicked is really what I'm asking here. Are we currently looking at the span that was clicked? That's what we're doing inside of here. Star is this one. That's the one that's changing every time. Span comes from here, and this is the one that was clicked. So if we have a match, I'm changing my variable match that was declared out here. I'm changing it to true. The next time I go through my loop, that's where I'm going to start removing rated. So from that point on, after the one that I found the match in, that one is going to be... Oh, actually, I've got an extra line here. I'm just going to delete this. This was uh, an earlier version that I had where I was actually saving numbers inside of here. So that was another approach. Don't need that line anymore. Once we found the match, from that point on, we're going to be removing rated. So if I clicked 5, the previous time and all five stars were lit up, 
This time, as I go through, I'm adding it to first, adding it to second, adding it to third, because the third's the one that I clicked on. And then from that point on, I'm removing the rated class. Now, after our loop, here's the loop where we're doing all the matching and adding and removing the classes. After that's done, I want to go up to stars, which is my div that contains the whole thing, and I'm going to set the attribute data rating equal to, and right here, what I need is the number. I want to save that. I'm going to put this back into data rating because up here, data rating, this is where I'm going to keep track of it. So if I had a bunch of these on the page, each one of them, I want to have their own data rating. So to update this and save that number to use later on, I need to know which one was it. As I'm going through here, I need to know what was the number of the one that was clicked on. Now I don't have that number inside my HTML anymore. I don't have a data property in here with that number that I can just access. What I need to do is I need to track this as I'm going through the loop. So in my for each loop, we can add a second variable here. This will give me the index number. This will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. First time through is 0, second time is 1, third time is 2, and so on. This tells me which position in the array of the star elements, what position are we at? Well, at the point where we find the match, that's the one that we want. So we'll create a variable called num, set it to 0 by default, when we find the match, we're going to update num, and we're going to set that equal to the index number plus 1. Why plus 1? Because we're dealing with the numbers 0 through 4, but we want the numbers 1 through 5. So whatever that index number is, we have to add 1 onto it. So this is going to be the variable num that we pass down into here, like that. Now we're going to update that. So in the HTML, if we inspect this, if we go over to, don't need to be in uh, that mode, close this, inside the body, here's our stars. All right, there we go. There's the three rated ones. This was the default when the page loads. Data rating is three. If I click on the first one, there we go. Now only this one has the class rated, and the rating is one. If I click on five, they've all got the class rated and data rating is five. So this is what we're doing with the HTML, or sorry, with the JavaScript. This is how we're manipulating the HTML. We're changing which ones have the class rated and we're changing the number that goes inside of here. All right, our final step was, how do I get this number to appear here without doing anything in the JavaScript with this number? I just have this after pseudo element that I've added to the div, which appears automatically after all of them. Now in my CSS, what I'm doing is I'm creating a counter and I'm counting how many things have the class rated. And whatever that number is, that's what I'm going to be displaying in here, followed by slash five. So let's take a look at the actual CSS. Right, stars, that is my div. For this to work, um, I just font size, font weight, that's not critical to here, but it's just to make it match the size of the other things. Counter reset, I've given it a label. So this is just a name that I've given to my counter. I'm creating a brand new counter on the stars element, and I'm allowed to count it and anything that's inside of it. So any child elements, I can use this counter and count things. Star dot rated, for every star, for every one of these spans with the class star, if it also has the class rated, I'm going to increment the counter. Which one am I going to increment? This one. How much am I going to increment it by? One. So I'm adding one for everything that has the class rated. That's going to give me this number. And then inside of the after pseudo element for this div, I'm going to set the content equal to the counter method, and this is the name of the counter. So whatever its value is, and its value is the number of elements with the class rated. So three out of five, four out of five, whatever this number is, 
and then a space. I have to put a space in here for this to work properly. Inside the string, I'm just putting slash five every time after the counter. So there it is. By default, it's three, and then every time I click on a different one, it's counting the number of elements that have rated. Just to show you that this does work, if I made that a two, incrementing it by two every time. That's four, six, eight, ten. Just like that. So it is the CSS that is actually doing the counting for us. All right, great. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Don't forget to take a look at the code pen to see the slightly different version that I used for creating the same thing before. And as always, thanks for watching.